Mid Journey just released their latest model version six. And in this video, we're gonna go through what's new. I'm gonna teach you how to set it up, how to subscribe to a plan so you can start generating images. And then we'll actually start generating images inside of Discord so you can learn how to do it yourself. Let's get started. So very exciting that arguably the best AI image generator just released a new model and that's version six. The previous model was version 5.2 and this is what we have new in version six. So first, they're giving us much more accurate prompt following as well as longer prompts. So before the length of your prompt would determine what is shot out in the image. So at the beginning of your prompt, words one through five is the most influential, meaning what you put there at the start of the prompt is most likely gonna show up in your image. As the prompt gets longer, those later words are still in play, but there's a less chance that they're gonna appear in your image. When you got to word 60 plus, that stuff was probably not gonna appear at all. Now I can't find an exact prompt length for this new version because this blog post only talks about up to version four. So we can assume that word 60 plus there's a better chance that those words are gonna appear in your image. I still don't think it's 100%, but it's probably going from completely ignored to something like still in play. They're giving us improved coherence and model knowledge. It's giving us improved image prompting and a remix mode. Remix mode is like variations. And in this example, he's taking a photorealistic image and he's remixing it to be an illustration. You can do this by clicking remix mode and then adding what you want to do at the start of your prompt. Now, if you remembered before in earlier mid-journey models, generating anything with text was a hassle. That's why a lot of us moved on to Dolly 3. But with version six, they're now giving us minor text drawing ability. So it's getting better. To get text in your outputs, you need to put your text in quotations. And then they think these stylized values might help. That's raw or lower. They've also improved their upscalers. Upscaling is taking a small image and then making it larger, but with keeping the higher resolution. They're also offering all of these features at launch with features like pan, zoom, tune, and describe being released later this month. They're stating that prompting with V6 is significantly different than version five. They want us to relearn how to prompt. So it appears to be much more sensitive to your prompt now in old mid journey prompts, you'd always add these type of keywords at the end of your prompt. So this example is like photorealistic, 4K, 8K. You'd add a camera type like Kodak. And those keywords at the end of your prompt would usually help you get the style that you were after. So they've cut that down. They don't want these large wordy prompts anymore. Short, simple, straight to the point prompts seem to work better now with version six. And that's because it's much better at understanding what you want. Instead, they want us to use their built-in features. Like if you want a photographic image, using dash dash style raw will give you what you're after. Lower values of stylize will give you better prompt understanding, while higher values will give you better aesthetics. And they're telling us that speed, image quality, coherence, prompt following, text accuracy, all that good stuff, is gonna continuously improve over the coming weeks. This is very new, it's an alpha stage, and anyone on a paid subscription is able to test it out. So if you're completely new, if you have never used Midjourney before, this is how you set it up. Start by going to midjourney.com, and we're gonna scroll down here on the homepage until this top bar appears, and then we're gonna go sign in. Midjourney works through Discord. Discord is a chat app, that's similar to all of your favorites like WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, DMs, whatever you use, Discord is its own platform for chatting, but it's also great for hooking up APIs, creating bots, and that's why a lot of these AI generators are using this platform. So they need to connect to your Discord profile. So this is my Discord profile right here. If I scroll down, I'm gonna click Authorize. When you first sign in, you'll land on the MidJourney homepage. Here you can scroll and look through all the images generated by the community. You can even click on them, read the prompt that they used, like them, right click to save them to your computer. The choice is yours. But if you wanna start generating images yourself, 
you need a paid subscription. So hover over your profile in the bottom left corner, click it, and then manage subscription. I'm currently on the basic plan, but here are all the options. You have yearly or monthly. The basic plan is $10 per month, and they give you roughly 200 generations. If you want unlimited generations, you can update that plan to $30 per month. That's a standard plan. With each subsequent plan, they give you more hours of fast generations. This is how quickly you get access to their GPUs when generating images. I found that the basic plan is pretty fast with generating images. It just takes a couple seconds. But for people with extremely low patience, this might be of use to you. So once you've subscribed to a plan, you'll get access to their mid-journey Discord server, and you'll now have access to the image generator. There are two places you can generate images. On this left bar here, you can scroll down to any of the newcomer rooms. Let's click this one, Newbie 70. And in this room, you can watch a live feed of people generating images. So I'm gonna scroll down here and you can see all the stuff that people have created and the prompts that they've used. You can do this for inspiration, you can do this to learn what works and what doesn't. You could also upscale other people's images that they've created if you like what they did and that user didn't. But if you want more private generations, I like to add the Midjourney bot to my own Discord server. So you do that by finding the Midjourney bot on the right side. See, it's right here. I'm gonna click on it and then scroll up to add app. Now you can add the Midjourney bot to your personal server. I'm gonna click this drop down box. I'm gonna select a server. If you don't have a server, you can go to the left side here and on this plus button, click add server, create your own. I'm gonna skip this question. Let's call this West GPT, click create. Now when I click the mid journey bot and click add app, I can add it to the West GPT server. Click that and continue. Now when I go to my server, you can see all the people active are me and the mid journey bot. So that means I can start generating images with Midjourney. All of Midjourney's commands start with the forward slash button. And you can look under the Midjourney bot, all of the feature options that you have. Now you don't need to know all of these in order to generate images, but there are two important ones. The first is slash settings and the other is slash imagine. So I'm gonna go to slash settings first and then hit enter. And by default, you can see the version model is 5.2. So I'm gonna click this and change it to Midjourney version six. Now we quickly read about these modes in the blog post, but you can just keep all of these on default for now. And now when we're ready to generate images, we go forward slash imagine. This is the language we use to create images with Midjourney. All you have to do is write in your prompt below, hit enter and it will generate those images. So let's test with a prompt. Because Midjourney is an image generator and not a text generator, I like to use GPT-4 in ChatGPT to make my prompts. I'm gonna input, write me five Dolly image prompts to test an image generator's ability to make beach property mansion photographs. We know that ChatGPT is aware about Dolly, that Dolly is its image generator, and who better know how to prompt an image generator than the AI itself. So it's gonna give me five prompts, and I can look through all of these and see which one describes the image that I want to create the best. Let's just grab this first one here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into a word counter and it says 65 words. And if you can remember from that blog post, the prompt length has gotten larger with the version six model. So I'm very curious to see if the words at the end of this prompt will show up in our image and that's sailboats. So let's paste that prompt in, hit enter. And now the model is going to generate your image. You can watch the Midjourney AI slowly create your image. It starts very blurry and will get more and more clear as the percentage here increases. And here are the images. It creates four images for us. We can click and then open in browser. So I like to use the zoom feature here. And look, it actually has sailboats in the distance. I can't see any in this image. I'm not sure if those are supposed to be sailboats. There's definitely one here but this is exactly what we were after, a mansion on a beachfront property. To get an individual image, you need to use these buttons down here. U1, U2, U3, U4 means upscale image one, image two, image three, image four. 
and it's one, two, three, four. If I like the fourth image, I can click U4 and it would upscale it. So I can right click, save image as, and download it to my computer. The V's mean variations. If you thought an image was pretty close, but wasn't quite there yet, you can click the V button to get an alternate generation. Let's use this third one for example. I really like the mansion, but I didn't like what was in the ocean over here. They don't quite look like sailboats to me. I'm also not sure what's going on with this blob. So I'm going to click V3 and get some variations of this image. And here are the variations. You can see it's the same house, but it's been flipped in the different images. I'm going to open in browser to get a larger view. Now we're starting to see the sailboats in the distance. Perfect. This sailboat is flying in the sky. It seems to have changed the landscape, the yard of each of these mansions, but the overall aesthetic of the house has stayed the same. But from the post, we don't have to make a very large prompt. So I'm just going to take this first sentence here. Let's go slash imagine, paste it in, and let's see what it comes up with. I'm giving the AI generator a lot more freedom with my prompt. And all of these are pretty good. Same similar aesthetic, same style, sunset, over an ocean. But we get some different vibes here. It's more of a bluish image. It looks like a painting. This one looks more like a photograph. With a much smaller prompt, we still got pretty decent AI outputs. This little circle here will regenerate the entire prompt that you just made. I'm going to click this. So you don't have to copy your text, go slash imagine, and paste it in again. And here are the new generations. Mid Journey version 6 can now do minor text. This is the exact prompt they use in the blog post. But I'm going to change it up a bit. Instead of hello world, let's go west GPT. And this dash dash AR 16 by 9 means aspect ratio 16 by 9. So instead of a square image, that is going to create a landscape image. Here are all the aspect ratios that you get with Mid Journey. You can create anything from squares, landscape, or vertical images. So let's pop this in and see how well it can write the text. They want us to put the text you want in the image between two quotation marks. And I don't think it quite got it yet. Again, it's saying minor text. Wes, ah, it's so close. SPT? Again, this is Wes PT. It's nowhere in this one. Now this one's funny, it's actually on the marker but did West GPTT. So I still don't think the text is quite there yet, but before we just get jumbled letters. So this is definitely a step in the right direction. Now let's take a look at this remix mode. First, we need to create an image that we want to remix. I'm going to go slash settings and we're going to turn on raw mode and then we're going to go slash imagine. I'm going to write a woman sitting in a theater and she's scared of the movie. And now hopefully with this raw mode, I'm going to get a more photorealistic style. This is what they're telling us to do now. And this is the results that we got. These look real to me. It's insane what these image generators can do now. Look at this. Look at the imperfections that they have on the faces. This woman's face literally has like a mole, a zit, a little indent. Absolutely wild. So it's that third one I'm looking for. Now we're going to go slash settings again. And this time we're going to turn on remix mode. Now when I hit the variation on the image I want to change, let's say number three, we get a remix prompt dialog box. I'm going to add to my prompt a flat 2D style illustration and we're going to keep everything else the same. I'll hit submit. Now we have four brand new variations that have been remixed from that original image. And if we look at that third one, that's the one we used, I definitely see the resemblance. To me, this third one looks the most similar. This fourth one's pretty good too. If you want me to continue this video series on Mid Journey version 6, and I can go through all of these other features, we touched on aspect ratio, but chaos, weird, tile, all the stylized, the varies, we did remix, blend, and then describe is only for version 5, but you input an image and it will create a prompt from that image. Let me know in the comments below which feature you're most interested in, and I will cover it in a future video. I also want to know how you guys are going to use this new version of Midjourney. I'm absolutely loving how real the humans look in their generations. Like the imperfections in the face, like I can't get over how real these images look. 
I have lots of plans for the photorealistic style. What are you guys going to do with it? I'll see you guys soon. Later.